Good morning, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to ICC, International Christian Community. Uh, I'd like to welcome all of you. All of you, you're online, because in this time of COVID-19, we cannot worship together in person, but uh, we can worship together with you online as we live stream this Sunday service. It's a special Sunday service. It's Easter Sunday, and we're celebrating that he is risen. Before I open in a word of prayer, I would just like to say I am staring at a camera, but I know that all of you are out there in your homes as we come to celebrate this uh, joyous occasion. So I welcome to all of you the congregation ICC, who nor we normally, where we normally worship together, but now we are in our homes because of the situation we are in, and also welcome to all of you around the world. Um, I would just like to remind you we're also celebrating communion as we remember Christ, his uh, death, burial, and resurrection, just like to remind you that just to prepare some bread and some wine or juice, whichever you like, uh, as we come to celebrate this later in the service. So I'll open in a word of prayer before I hand over to Andy, Andy the worship, our worship leader for today. Heavenly Father, <clears throat> we thank you that we can come together to worship you, to celebrate your son who died for us and saved us and who rose uh, to give life to the world. Heavenly Father, we pray that you bless each and every one of us, those who are joining with us today as we live stream the service, joining with us as we come to praise and worship you, Heavenly Father. We thank you for the miracle of the technology where people are isolated in their homes or maybe by themselves. Now the technology serves you, Heavenly Father, bringing all of us together. And we say this in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Sandra. I love this day. This is uh, the day that he rose. We're going to celebrate that together. So please join me. We're going to begin with a song that says, You laid aside... Your Majesty. You laid aside your majesty gave up everything for me, suffered at the hands of those you had created. You took all my guilt and shame when you died and rose again. Now today you reign in heaven and earth exalted. I really want to worship my Lord, you have won my heart and I am yours forever and ever. I will love you. You're the only one who died for me, gave your life to set me free. So I lift my voice to you in adoration. 
We celebrate he's risen, but let's not forget there was a price he paid for me and for you. So, uh, Savior, I come, quiet my soul. Remember, redemption's hill where your blood was spilled for my ransom. For some of you, uh, it may feel like you're in a desert. For some of you, it may feel like you're in the fire. For some of you, it may feel like you're in a battle. These are unprecedented times, but more so now than ever, we need to rely on the name of Jesus. We're going to sing this song. It's called the Desert Song. So whatever situation you're in, let's just focus, focus, focus on Jesus. This is 
my prayer in the desert when all that's within me feels dry. This is my prayer and my hunger in me. My God is the God who provides. And this is my prayer in the fire, in weakness or trial or pain. There is a faith proved of more worth than gold. shall remain. I will rejoice, I will declare, God is my victory and he is here. This is my prayer in my battle, when triumph is still on its way. I am a conqueror and season you are still God I have a reason to sing I have a reason to worship all of my life in every season you are still God I have a reason to sing I have a reason to Received, I will sow. All of my life, in every season, you are still God. I have a reason to live. I have a reason to worship. Amen. Thank you, Andy for bringing heaven down. And we would like to take time right now. It's an unusual season we are living in. And right now, we just want to pray for the different aspect that's related to COVID-19. We want to pray for the government, the first responders. We're also going to pray for those who are positive, who have been affected or infected. And we want to pray for everyone as well, that God will keep us safe and protected, as well as for Joe, those who have... Um, been at risk because of their job their job has been at risk because of the situation shall we do that let's lift up our hands and let's lift up all these um, items to the Lord in prayer Heavenly Father we thank you for this day as we remember you didn't just die on the cross you conquer death you conquer sicknesses you conquer hell and you are resurrected seated at the right hand of our Father interceding for us. So with this confidence, we come before you this morning. We want to lift up our government before you. Your word exhort us to pray for those who are in authority. And we thank you 
Thank you for our Prime Minister. Thank you for those who are in authorities. It's a heavy responsibility upon their shoulder right now for important decisions they have to make on a daily basis. And Lord, we want to entrust them into your hand, that you will annoy them, you will empower them, you will give them wisdom beyond their experiences, oh God, that they will make the right decision, appropriate for Denmark and for all the different government in different countries, God, that will be for the best interests of the country. We commit them into your hand. And Lord, we want to pray for the first responders. We thank you for their, their life. We thank you for their sacrifices. We thank you for the talents you have given to them. And we pray that as they reach out to those who are infected, that you will protect them and you will give them wisdom as well to treat all these patients and the grace to go with. We also want to pray for those who have been infected, God that your healing power and your presence will be there to reach down and touch them, to bring relief, Lord, for those who are suffering and for those who are indirectly affected, for those who have to face family and loved ones who have died because of their sicknesses. God, that your comfort will come upon them. You will minister to them in a way that no man can. Lord, we want to pray and thank you for ICC members locally, near and far. God, we pray for your hand of protection to rest upon our flock, that you will keep them safe under your wings. We also want to pray for the rest of Denmark, Lord, especially for those who are old, those who are vulnerable, that your angels will watch and guard over them. And last but not least, we want to pray for those who have been affected, those who have lost their job or those who have to face pay cut as a result of this crisis those whose business has to shut down because of this crisis, God, that you will provide. You are Jehovah Jireh, our provider, and we just want to entrust all this into your hand, knowing that you are still seated on the throne. We don't have, we are not able to explain what is happening here on earth, but God, you are exalted above the earth, and that's why we come before you, and we just want to cast all this burden back into your hand to know that you will take care of it. We thank you, we praise you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, uh, Lillian. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you, Andy, for helping us to have this Easter celebration. It is not all doom and gloom, as it may seem around the world, let alone in the Garden of Gethsemane 2,000 years ago. Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm just very thankful to uh, join you this morning, those of you in Denmark, and also our online growing community. We are close to 1,500, uh, those who are part of the ICC's homepage uh, in Facebook, as well as uh, those of you who are in Denmark. We're just so thankful that you have joined us. Now, as Sandra mentioned to you earlier on, just again a reminder, after the sermon is completed in a little while, I will be from this pulpit sharing the communion with you. I have already prepared uh, for myself uh, the cup which is with me here, as well as the uh, plate. Everything should be uh, 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 the bread. So um, I want to just make sure that the sound is uh, connected. Uh, maybe I'm not on. I just want to be sure here. I'm on? Okay, right. Uh, they are working on a little bit uh, in the background here, ensuring that the sound is functioning the way it should. So, in the meantime, I also want to thank uh, the uh, limited crew that we have uh, here. That is uh, um, people from my family, my wife and my two sons, Prince and and uh, Josiah, as well as thank you for Andy and Sandra, the board members, um, uh, as well as uh, our two faithful volunteers, Ulf, uh, who is from uh, uh, Denmark here, as well as uh, Michael, who is also from Denmark, helping us to ensure that all technicalities works out. So I just want to make sure that uh, everything else is okay, the sound is okay, and the image is okay. Perfect. So for those of you who are following us online, bear with us, please. This is uh, something new, but in spite of the space and in spite of the distance, we are still connected and we are still together. 
and we thank God uh, uh, for, for that. Amen? Um, just to let you know that for those of us who have been in ICC, it has been uh, since 2019, we have had a tremendous, tremendous uh, uh, revival in a sense where the Spirit of God had been pouring down in our services in very extremely unusual ways. And we have really been thankful to God that uh, this has been uh, our experience. And it's kind of led to this very moment that we are in here right now. So I thank God for that. I'm going to uh, open in a word to prayer before I share with you the message for today, the message that is uh, entitled The Passover. And I believe that uh, you will be uh, tremendously blessed as we go on and share with you this tremendous uh, message. Amen. So do please uh, join me in a word of prayer uh, while the crew in the background is trying to make sure that in case you have an issue with the sound, uh, they will try to ensure that it is functioning the way it ought to. Amen. Meantime, let me just uh, uh, pray and ask God's blessing over today's Easter service. Amen. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you in the name of Jesus for what you are doing in our midst. And I want to thank you, Lord, that in this season of Easter, it's a beautiful time of resurrection, a beautiful time of life. So I pray and ask in Jesus' mighty name that, Lord, you would have your Son, Jesus Christ, glorified in our midst. We thank you, Lord, for what Jesus was willing to go through from death to burial, and thank God, resurrection. And this Sunday around the world, we are celebrating this beautiful occasion of Easter, the hope of glory. So we pray you speak to our hearts and our minds as we look into your word. Let it be a blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. So this morning, I want to share with you a message that is entitled, The Passover. The Passover. I'm very sure that those of you in the Jewish circles are very familiar with the Passover. Some in the Christian circles are, and some have probably heard the term and might be not as familiar as those of you who are exposed to the uh, Tanakh. Uh, but it's a very important aspect for you and I to understand because the Passover is a beautiful story that is linked to you and I, as a matter of fact, linked to Easter in this particular season. Please bear with me because I want to share some Bible verses that I believe is going to be useful for you to see the big picture after which we will just uh, look at different aspects of not only Passover but also the beautiful celebration of first fruits. It will all make sense as I go through with you. So to begin with, I want to share with you uh, from the book of Exodus uh, verses, uh, chapter 12 verses 1. To 30, and I do believe it's going to be a blessing to you. And I'll make a couple of comments along the way as we move on. So join me, please, as we look into these beautiful uh, Bible scriptures. Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 to 30. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, mind you, they were still in Egypt right now. All the nine plagues has taken place, and the tenth plague uh, is here about to happen, and God is giving them very specific instructions concerning what to do. This month is to be for you the first month, the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, each one, each for his household. Every man, every family was supposed to take a lamb. Listen again very carefully here. If any household uh, is too small for a whole lamb, they must share one with their nearest neighbor. 
having taken into account the number of people there are, and to, uh, you are to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with each person uh, will eat. The animal you choose, now here it gets very interesting, the animal you choose must be a, a, a year old a male without defect, has to be perfect, you know, not lame or blind or perfect. And you may take them from the sheep or goats. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month when all the members of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. So this specific animal is selected from your flock. It is actually brought into your home, a one-year-old, let's say, lamb. And the kids in the home and the family members, neighbors, everybody kind of gets familiar for 14 days with this beautiful little lamb. And you actually, you know, do um, develop form of affinity and affection for this almost a household pet only for 14 days because after these 14 days something takes place here which can be quite uh, drastic if not dramatic it says here then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides on the sides and the top of the door frames of the house where they eat the lambs just try and, and picture this, because we, we lose the, the imagery very quickly. You take the blood in the hyssop, you put it on the side of the doorpost, and you put it on the top. What sign does this give you? It gives you the sign of the cross. Amen. And just by, the, by gravity, when the blood begins to drip, the sign of the cross is formed on every doorpost. Isn't that awesome? Keep, keep following me because it gets more exciting. That night, they are to eat the meat roasted over the fire along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. Very important again. When you're eating the lamb, you're eating it with bread that is without yeast. Yeast speaks of sin. I'll come into it in a little while later. And also bitter herbs. Why not, you know, spicy herbs or nice uh, f flavored herbs? Bitter. There's a reason for it because of what the Lamb of God has to go through. Keep following me again. Do not eat the meat raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with the head, legs, and internal organs. This entire a lamb, one year old, was supposed to be roasted totally in fire. Fire always speaks of the presence of God. And God many times talked to the children of Israel by answering them with fire. Do not leave any of it till morning. If some is left till morning, you must burn it all. It's not meant to be left over. It has to be completely, completely consumed and finished. This is how you are to eat it. With your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand, eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Eat it in haste because they were actually about to leave Egypt as well at that time. And they had to eat it in haste. This Passover lamb is the period of it. It's going to be a quick one. It's only three days or just uh, three nights. And then Jesus uh, rose on the, tree, the third day. Beautiful. As we go on, follow me again. On the time... On that time, excuse me, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn of both people and animals, and I will bring judgment on the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The entire Passover was at the end of the judgment that took place. All the ten gods of Egypt. It's, it's awesome. And then he goes on and he says, The blood will be the sign for you on your houses where you are. And when, this, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. Glory be to God. This is very significant, brothers and sisters, not only on Easter, but for you and I. The plagues, no plagues will touch you if you are under the blood. Hallelujah. Does that make any sense? Just, just, just join me, please, because as I was reading this passage, I was getting so excited over the fact that uh, we have to live under the blood in faith, not in the world or in, and under the gods of Egypt in fear. As we go on. This is the day you are to commemorate for the generations to come. 
You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. That's why till today we are celebrating Passover everywhere in the world. For seven days you are to eat bread made without yeast. Bread without yeast, unleavened bread. On the first day, remove the yeast from your houses, for whoever eats anything with yeast in it uh, from the first day to the seventh day must be cut off from Israel. As a matter of fact, what the, the Israeli, Israelis will do is they go to the entire house to get rid of yeast and take away yeast, take it out of the, of the house. It's very significant. You will see what I'm saying as we go on further. On the first day, hold a sacred assembly and another one on the seventh day. Do not work on all these days except to prepare food for everyone to eat. That is all you may do. <laughs> um, whether we like it or not, the entire world today is going through a, a Sabbath. And we, even if you wanted to work, maybe you're asked to stay at home. It's significant what's going on in the world today. Lord have mercy. Celebrate the festival of unleavened bread because it was on this very day that I brought your divisions out of Egypt. Celebrate this day as a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. In the first month, you are to eat bread without yeast from the evening of the 14th day until the evening of the 21st day. For seven days, no yeast is to be found in your house. And anyone, whether foreigner or native born, who eats anything with yeast in it must be cut off from the community of Israel. God was very specific about yeast, whether it was a foreigner who became uh, an Israelite or whether it was a Jew who was uh, already born as, a, as an Israelite. The covenant was being made here among everyone. For those of us who are believers, we are the, uh, gr the, the branch that was engrafted into the vine, uh, which is Israel. We are also part of the, 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 the people of God, the fellowship of God. And so... And he goes on in verse 20, he says, Eat nothing made with yeast. Wherever you live, you must eat unleavened bread. Then Moses summoned all the elders. Now, let me come back to this scripture so that I'll tell you about the significance of it. I'm not saying from now on, just stop eating yeast. There's a purpose for all of this. Then Moses summoned all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go at once and select the animals for your families and slaughter the Passover lamb. Take the bunch a bunch of hyssop, dip it into the blood in the basin, and put some of the blood on the top of both sides of the door frame, and on the top and both sides of the door frames. None of you shall go out of the door uh, or your house until morning, because that was the period when the angel of death was passing through Egypt. When the Lord goes through the land to strike down the Egyptians, he will see the blood on top of the on the top and the sides of the door frames, and will pass over that doorway and he will not permit the destroyer to enter your house or houses and strike you down friends i just want to mention pause for a moment here and mention this the destroyer cannot touch you if god doesn't give permission as it was with Job, as it was down the scriptures, no, no harm, no weapon that is forged or formed or specially made against you can prosper if God's blessings and his protection is over you. And wherever you are at home, this is a moment to shout, Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Obey these instructions. There's a lasting ordinance for you and your descendants. When you enter the land that the Lord will give you as he promised, uh, observe this ceremony. And when your children ask, what does this ceremony mean to you? Then tell them, it is the Passover sacrifice to the Lord who passed over the houses of Israelite in Egypt and spared our homes when he struck down the Egyptians. Then the people bowed down and worshipped hallelujah this act of god's mercy act of god's protection act of god's providence made the people worship him in return the israelites did not uh, did just as uh, what the lord has commanded moses and aaron at midnight the lord struck down all the firstborn of egypt from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on the throne to the firstborn of the prisoner who was in the dungeon and the firstborn of all the livestock as well. 
Pharaoh and all his officials and the Egyptians got up during the night, and there was loud wailing in Egypt, for there was not a house without someone dead. Hallelujah. Of awesome, awesome passage, and I just ask you to take some time to meditate through it as I'm going to share with you a little bit more about this. And now we just jumped a little bit into the New Testament to talk a little bit about this lamb before I come to my introduction. In John chapter 1, verses uh, 29 to 34, John makes a declaration when he sees Jesus. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and he said, Look! The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And then John says, this is the one I meant when I said, a man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Of course, Jesus, John was born before Jesus, and Jesus was born later. I myself did not know him, but the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John gave this testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remained on him. And I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, the man whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is the one who will, bapt uh, will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I've seen and I testify that this is God's chosen one. John the Beloved says, I testify, Jesus, he is the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. So we've been in the Old Testament. We've come a little bit now down to the New Testament. And let me just take you one more step further down to the end of the New Testament, which is the book of Revelation. And then we will share. In the book of Revelation, we, we see this lamb once again. We hear about the lamb in Exodus. We see John declaring, that's the lamb. That's him. He's the one. And then we go on finally to the book of Revelation, chapter 5, verses 1 to 10. Beautiful verses. Revelation 5, 1 to 10. Now John the Beloved says, Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, Who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside of it. You can imagine the emotions that John, the beloved, was going through at this point in time. So nobody can open the scroll. I wept and wept because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or look inside. Then one of the elders said to me, do not weep. Some of us during this period, you know, in our lives, maybe we are feeling a little bit overwhelmed with things that's going on around us. And maybe we've been weeping, feeling helpless, feeling hopeless even, feeling overwhelmed. Maybe you're weeping. I just want to say exactly what this elder said to, to John. Do not weep. Stop weeping. Turn your moaning into dancing. Because there is hope. There is a future. There's beautiful song coming out of the Lamb. He says here, do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Glory be to God. The root of David has triumphed. He has won. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seas. Then I saw, and of course John is now looking for a lion, and he's looking for this beautiful uh, triumphant lion. And then he sees a lamb. He says, then I saw a lamb looking as if it has been slain, talking about the cross, standing at the center of the throne, center stage. This lamb that was strained is now taking, taking center stage had seven horns and seven eyes, which had, are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat from the throne. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb. Each one had a harp, and they were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Don't ever forget that. Every time you pray, your prayer comes forth as an incense before God. And they sang a new song. This is a beautiful new song. Those of you who are songwriters, I want to encourage you to try and put a tune to this song. This is the song that they sang. It says... And they sang a new song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals because you were slain and it, 
and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. Glory be to God. You're talking about an international heaven here. It's not just a national heaven. You have made them to be a kingdom of priests. Glory be to God. Not just one guy behind the pulpit. All of us, a kingdom of priests to serve him, to serve our God. And they will reign on earth. Hallelujah. And last but not least, just one verse. Then we'll go on to introduction. Revelation 13, verse 8. Beautiful. All inhabitants on the earth will worship the beast at that time when the tribulation takes place. All whose names have not been written in the Lamb's book of life. And then it goes on to say, the Lamb who was slain from the foundation or the creation of the world. Hallelujah. Amen? So, brothers and sisters, I just want you, please, just for a little while, I know there's a lot of scriptures, but it's so important that we understand the Word of God, especially in times like this. Join me on a journey today as we trace the historical Passover lamb throughout scriptures to understand the importance and its importance and as well as its significance. You will discover that right from the Garden of Eden, I'll point out to you in a little while's time that the lamb was slain, the lamb in, in inverted commas, because there was an animal, we don't know if it was a lamb. Now, also, the question quite often comes up, now, why would God create mankind when he knows he will eventually rebel against him? Why? Why would God do that? The answer I want to give to you is this. First of all, it's because God knows the beginning from the end. He knows the beginning all the way from the end. And the second reason is that why would God do that? That's because he's in love. <laughs> Our God has been and is and will ever be in love with you and I, mankind who are created after his image. He's just so much in love with you and me. That's why he's gone to the extents that he's gone through to redeem us because he loves you and I. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. So what we want to do in a, in a brief time right now before we go to communion, we want to talk about the Passover throughout scriptures. We want to talk about the symbolic meaning of the Passover, which is very important. Last but not least, we'll look into Jesus, who is the first fruit of our resurrections. Now, after that, we will partake the communion together. And let me tell you one thing. Partaking the communion is entering into the new covenant that was cut for us on the cross. That's why we're going to do it right after this uh, message. First of all, let's go back again and look at the Passover throughout scriptures. Now, I mentioned to you that the first time uh, we hear about uh, the word death, the word death was actually uh, in the Bible, in the book of uh, Genesis, it was actually mentioned by God himself. If those of you who are taking notes, it's in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 17. The very first time we hear this word death, it was God saying that. Remember the story? God put Adam and Eve in the garden, and then he told them, he said, look, you can eat of all these trees, but this one tree I don't want you to eat, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Why? Is it, is it because God didn't want them to understand good and evil? No. It was not about good and evil. It was about lordship. God is trying to tell mankind that you're a steward, and I am the the, the, the Lord. You are here to serve me. It's about service. You're supposed to be sort of a priest taking care of all the things I've given you. The reason you're not supposed to eat this is because I want to remain Lord. It was pure and simple. It was all about lordship. And so therefore, they were not supposed to. And that's where the very first time the word death was introduced. It was about a spiritual death or a death that breaks our relationship with God. And the first time we ever read of bloodshed on this planet. It was in the book of Genesis chapter 3 and verse 21, and the story was that when Adam and Eve sinned, and they, instead of trying to obey God by, by submitting to him and not taking that which was forbidden, they went and took the portion, the sacred portion, that which belongs to God. And as a result of that, God had to take them out of the Garden of Eden because Behold, unless they go and also eat the fruit of life, and now as a fallen sinner with a broken relationship with God, if they would live eternally in that form, therefore God had to take them away. Now, 
as God took them away, the Bible tells us in 321 Genesis, uh, 322 Genesis, that he actually had made for them garments out of skin. And that was when an animal was sacrificed. Some scholars say, ah, it could have been a lamb. Some said, we don't know what animal it is. I really don't know. But the fact that the lamb is mentioned all over the truth, God made garments to cover them. That's the very, very first time we see bloodshed on this planet. And I know, understanding God and his nature, that there must have been a conversation between God and Adam as to how this redemption will take place. Even as he mentions about the snake that's going to bite your heel, but you're going to crush his head. And it was a beautiful, beautiful a prophecy of the Messiah that was going to come and went through what we experienced during this period of Easter. Now, later on in the book of Genesis, we also see God cutting a covenant with Abraham. And God told Abraham, all right, you know, cut uh, and five different animals, put them you know, facing each other, and, and the pot of fire uh, passed through with, 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 uh, uh, and, and made a covenant. God cut this covenant with Abraham, and God, when he makes an agreement, he never goes back on his words. Hallelujah. Amen? Now, just a little hint here. The more godly you become, the closer you get to God, the less you will break an agreement. Because the nature of God is such that He doesn't break promises. Amen? So when God makes a promise, be it in His Word, there's over 6,000 promises He has made. There are many covenants God has made between man, conditional and unconditional covenants. He will never go back on His Word as the covenant that was made in the book of Genesis. Glory be to God. And so God made a covenant with Abraham. And later on, God tested Abraham. God actually told Abraham, Abraham, I want you to sacrifice your son. You know, remember, Abraham was a friend. And so Abraham was probably moved by this, took Isaac up to the mountain. And of course, you know the rest of the story, God did not have him sacrifice Isaac. But some scholars believe that it could have been at that point in time that because God considered Abraham a friend, that God shared with him about the gospel, about how Jesus would come to make a way for you and I and for all the peoples on the earth, as written in the book of Revelation. Every tribe, every nation, every tongue, every group, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Now, then, the Passover, as you know, we just read the passage, was introduced in the book of uh, Exodus. And mind you, this was in a season, a scenario, in context, if you read it together, it was just after the judgment has taken place over the ten, you can say, primary gods of Egypt. Egypt was a symbol of the world. And God says that as I uh, bring you through the cross, I will bring judgment across, uh, against these gods. Why? Because I'm a jealous God. I will not have any other God competing with me. I want you to serve me. You were created for my pleasure, not to serve the gods of this world. Hallelujah. And therefore, we see again the, the, the whole concept of sacrifice taking place in the tabernacle, again in the temple. The first thing you would enter is the huge uh, brazen altar where sacrifices were made. And then John, as we read earlier on, refers to Jesus as the Lamb of God. Glory be to God. And of course, Peter and Paul, they constantly made references to Jesus as the Passover Lamb. He was the Passover Lamb. And we read about the Lamb of God in the book of Revelation. I just want you to know that it's all been set up right from the beginning. God committed in love to us has constantly made it possible that the Lamb was all over the Scriptures, or I would say, His love letter to you and I. We go to the second part now, the symbolic meaning of the Passover. Now, as we read the Scriptures and also as it's being practiced in the house of, of, of many Jewish people today, the Lamb that was set aside and brought home was this lamb that they fell in love with. This is exactly what happened when Jesus, the lamb, was entering Jerusalem on a donkey. Jesus was going back home into Jerusalem. That lamb that was supposed to be slain is now connected to uh, entering home. Jerusalem, God's favorite and, and, and most uh, beautiful, uh, beloved city. Now, in the book of 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 19, it says here, but... With precious blood, as of the lamb, unblemished and spotless. Jesus was that unblemished, spotless lamb. In fact, he was riding a donkey that hasn't been rode by anybody. The blood of Christ. And then you go on to this aspect where before uh, Passover, there was the house was supposed to be cleansed of leaven. And I mentioned to you, leaven was a sign of sin. Now pause. 
Remember what happened when Jesus went into Jerusalem? What did he do? Jesus enters the temple and he overturns the tables of the money lenders and those of, who are selling and buying. And then he says, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you've turned it into a den of robbers. What did Jesus do? He took the leaven out of the temple. Can you see the connection now? Jesus was fulfilling what was meant to be done. And that's why Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7, this is what he said. Clean out the old leaven so that you may be a new lump, just as you are, in fact, unleavened. For Christ, our Passover, also has been sacrificed. Glory be to God. Amen? So, the, as I mentioned to you later on, the, the, the blood that was put on the doorpost, it made this beautiful sign of the cross because, you know, it was painted with the blood and down in the corners of the doorpost and it made the sign of the cross. It is the cross that the, the Passover speaks of. Now, the Passover meal was eaten with bitter herbs. This, what's the symbol? Jesus took br uh, bread, which we will do in a little while's time. He broke it and he served wine uh, to, his, to his disciples. And he said this is a new covenant. It was a sign and a symbol of the bitter death he was going to go through. And trust me, it was a bitter death. 39 strokes, strikes by the Roman uh, cat-eye. It was a painful uh, lash that was used on him. Each time they threw a lash on him, it would you know, rip off bits and pieces of meat from a living human being. It was a torturous, painful death that Jesus had to suffer in order to become that blood of sin. That's why it's the bitter herbs uh, that was eaten with the unleavened bread. Now, in today's Passover, just for your information, in some of you, you Jewish brothers and sisters, Messianic Jews, or even uh, watching, you might understand this. In today's Passover, one unleavened bread, when they are serving the unleavened, one unleavened bread is actually taken and they put a cloth and cover it and leave it aside and they eat all of the rest. After the end of the meal is over, they take that hidden uh, unleavened bread and take, open it up and eat it again. It's amazing because the symbol of this is that when Jesus was beaten, put on the cross, and when he was done, finally uh, gave up his ghost, he's taken down, covered with cloth, and put in the tomb. And guess what happens after three days? He comes out of the tomb and he resurrects. That's actually a symbol of the resurrection of Jesus after he's being put in the cross, in the, in, the, in the tomb. Now, also in most Jewish homes, there is an empty seat that is prepared uh, during the Passover meal. It's kind of interesting because during this uh, time, there is this empty seat. They call it the seat of Elijah, the one who was taken away in a chariot of fire. And it's amazing because the whole concept of it is that uh, they think Elijah is going to come back. Incidentally, it's not Elijah, it's Jesus that's coming back on the clouds. First of all, to take us away in the clouds, he will come and Maranatha is going to come and take us all home. We'll talk a little bit about it later on. Also, Jesus will finally come back on a white horse, glory, with, with, with garments that is actually stained with the blood, the sacrifice that he had achieved for you and I. Then, Jesus told his disciples, a new co covenant I make with you again. This is a covenant of love. Remember I told you the whole Bible is a love letter. Jesus said I'm making a new covenant of love so that uh, out of love we can serve him. We can sacrifice ourselves by taking up our crosses as he himself served and sacrificed. Jesus washed the feet of his disciples and thus we are called to participate in washing each other's feet, serving each other and loving each other as an example and as expression of the love that God had accomplished for us on the cross. Thus, each time we take communion, which we'll be doing in a little while, it is to recognize the death, the burial, the resurrection, and the soon return of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Now we're going on to the last part uh, of this uh, message before we go ahead and participate in the communion itself. Now, what is death, burial, and res resurrection? Jesus is what we call the first fruit. Jesus, the first fruit of our resurrection. That's what it's all about. Naturally, the story doesn't end here or end with doom and gloom. Uh, it just ends with the cross, but it ends with an empty tomb. Glory be to God. I think it was Lillian who was mentioning to me this morning. She said, someone had written to her. She said that uh, many of the churches uh, in, the, in the world today, because we are meeting online as a result of the lockdown, uh, seems to be empty. It's just like the tomb of Jesus Christ, which is empty. I've been to Jerusalem. 
I've seen the proposed tomb, empty tomb, and I can tell you it is empty. Glory be to God. Amen? So it doesn't matter. They can lock down uh, the, 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 the meetings, but they cannot lock down the presence of God inhabiting your temple, which is your body. Glory be to God. Amen and amen to that. Now here... Um, we are also introduced to another a very, very interesting biblical feast, which is what we call the first fruits, which is really about resurrection. Just read uh, to you uh, some verses, and then we'll go on to the conclusion. In the book of uh, Leviticus, chapter, nine, uh, chapter 23, verses 9 to 14, this is a beautiful, beautiful uh, scripture about the first fruit, which is actually about the resurrection. He says here, The Lord said to Moses, Leviticus 23, 9 to 14, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, when you enter the land I'm going to give you and reap, and you reap its harvest, bring to the priests a sheaf of the first grain of your harvest. It's very important, we, the first fruit. He is to wave the sheaf before the Lord so it will be accepted on behalf. And the priest is to wave it on the day after the Shabbat. The day after the Shabbat. Um, Jesus was crucified and placed in the tomb on the Shabbat, uh, which is Saturday. And then uh, he rose again on, the, on Sunday, which is beautiful because uh, we have this amazing picture, the day after the Shabbat. As a matter of fact, that's why many of us meet on the first day of the week, not the last day, which is the seventh day. Um, on that day, you wave the sheaf. You must sacrifice a burnt offering to the Lord, a lamb, a year old, without any defect, perfect lamb. Together with its grain offering of two tens of an ephah, of the finest flour mixed with olive oil, a food offering presented to the Lord, a pleasing aroma, and its drink offering a quarter of a hin of wine. It's again all about the communion. You must not eat any bread or roasted or grain or new grain until the very day you bring this offering to the Lord, to your God. This is to be a lasting ordinance for the generations to come wherever you live. You see, the whole concept, the whole symbol behind the first fruits is about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that's why in the book of 1 Corinthians, Paul was mentioning chapter 15 and verse 20. This is what Paul said. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Glory be to God. So everyone who died after, after Christ and believing in him, Jesus rose. As a result of that, they too will, will rise. And that's why in verse 23, uh, he talks about the rapture, which may take place at any time. This may even happen while I'm talking to you. In 1 Corinthians 15, 20, 23, just three verses down, he says, but each one has his own order. Christ, who is already resurrected, the first fruits, those of us who will be caught up to meet him in the air, after those, uh, afterwards, uh, those dead in Christ, afterward, those who are in Christ or who are Christ at his coming. So those Christ had already risen. Those who are dead in Christ, when Jesus comes, they will be the first one to, to rise. And then those of us who are alive, believing in him, we will also be caught up with him. So you see, it's not just about here and now. Jesus is coming back again. Hallelujah. Now, it's time for conclusion. And so I hope that you're still with me as we go through this beautiful teaching, as well as a little bit preaching to inspire you about the Passover, because I believe it's so so important. In closing, I'll share with you uh, two verses uh, from the book of Exodus again, chapter 23. This is what God said to uh, Israel. You see, sometimes uh, we, we, we take some of the Old Testament and some of us believers, we tend to say that, ah, oh, but you know, that's just the law. It's just about uh, uh, what was ha supposed to happen, but now we're in Christ, we're not uh, subject to the law anymore. You see, the law was symbolic of Christ's coming. And not next Sunday, but in a, uh, maybe two weeks from now, I'm going to share with you the, the, the seven main festivals that God expected the children of Israel to celebrate. They're doing it till this day. And I'm going to share with you oh, what are these seven uh, celebrations or feasts and what is the significance concerning us. It's really about Christ. It's beautiful. And I, and I just want to submit that to you because I believe you're going to really be blessed by it. But in closing, in conclusion, two verses to read from. 
Exodus chapter 23, verses 14 to 16, it says here, Three times you shall keep a feast to me in the year. You shall keep a feast of unleavened bread. You shall not. You shall eat unleavened bread for seven days, as I commanded you at the time appointed in the month of Abib, for in it you came out of Egypt. Of course, you know, which leads to um, the Passover. None shall appear before me empty. And then he goes on and he says, as and the feast of harvest, I'll come to that as well, and the first fruits of your labors which you have sown in the field, and the feast of ingathering at the end of the year when you have gathered in the first or the fruit of your labors from your field. This scripture, first of all, the unleavened, unleavened bread which leads to the Passover speaks of the death and the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then we go on to the first fruit, which obviously points out to his resurrection. Last but not least, it speaks about the ingathering, which points to what we call the end time harvest of souls. A time is coming around the planet. Trust me, and you're going to watch this. I believe we may experience it together, where there was going to be a massive, a massive harvest of souls the ingathering to the glory of God. God himself will turn hardened hearts to hearts that are now sensitive to him and the heart of the children will be turned to the Father as the hearts of this planet, the children of this earth, will be turned back to the Father. And I pray to God will be counted among the sheep and not the goats, that we will be among those who will respond to the Lord because it's happening right now as I'm talking to you. So, Jesus has always been in the center of the Bible, my friends. Always in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, and in our time as we are living in today. He should be the center of our lives as well. And when He's in the center of our lives, everything else will be well. Glory be to God. If Christ is in the midst of your house, in the midst of your heart, in the midst of your life, trust me, everything around you will fall in its right place. But when your life seems to be chaotic and confusing and everything seems to be moving all over the place, do a little test. They're talking a lot about tests today and COVID test is being talked about. Do a little Christ test. And the Christ test is, is Christ in the center of my heart? Is he in the center of my life? Is he in the center of my house? Hallelujah. Amen? Now, this lockdown is a time where People are locked down in their homes, but Christ is not locked down from your lives. Glory be to God. Because when the disciples saw Christ died, they were sort of taken away into a side. As a matter of fact, the disciples went to a lockdown. You know, 120 of them, they were afraid and they were hiding in an upper room. They locked themselves down because they were afraid of the Jewish people. And this 50 days after the death and the burial and the resurrection of Christ, guess what happens? The Holy Spirit comes upon these lockdown disciples and they become the most explosive witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So, hallelujah and amen to Christ being in us because when the Spirit comes, as he has already come and he's in our midst right now, he will set you ablaze and on fire to the ends of the earth. Glory be to God. Amen? So, I want to just uh, end with this beautiful, beautiful uh, verse, which uh, I think that you will enjoy, and, and, and so do, uh, do I. And then we'll close in prayer, uh, close in communion before we close in prayer. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 8, this is what it says. The devil and his, and his angels didn't know this. The people on this planet didn't know this. Even some of the angels in heaven, they, it was a mystery to them about this lamb that was meant to be sacrificed. Because it says here in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 8, I'll end up with this verse. It says here, none of the rulers of this age understood it. For if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Hallelujah. None of the rulers, they knew about it. If they had, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. And I just give 
God all the glory and the honor and the power and the praise because God kept it hidden. The devil thought, as long as I can, you know, kill the seed, as long as I get rid of the seed of the woman, as long as I get rid of the Messiah, as long as I get rid of the, the lineage where the Messiah is coming from, I am done it. He thought that as long as I get rid, they didn't know by doing that, today the children of God are countless they are like the sand, the sand on the shores of the sea and like the stars in the heavens. You can't count them. So in a sense, who has the last laugh? It is God because God's plans will never be thwarted. He made a promise. He will fulfill it. And we just thank God that that's what he has done to you and I. And that's why when Jesus made this beautiful, beautiful covenant of love, it was a covenant of the uh, uh, that was made even in the Passover, that you will be protected, you will be provided for, everything's going to be okay. I understand things may not look the way they are right now, but trust me, God is completely in control. This lockdown time is not a lockdown time for, uh, for us being away from God. In a sense, God has beautifully provided a Shabbat for us to be locked down with him. And after this lockdown, let us just soak into the Spirit of God because Pentecost is on the way where we shall just explode with fire into this planet to be his witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth for the final harvest, the great harvest to come in. So it all makes sense now why God gave these symbols in the Old Testament. It was all about Jesus. It is still about Jesus and glory be to God for what Jesus did for you and for I triumphant not a loser not hiding in some cave or being locked in some in some tomb he is resurrected the, the resurrection power is the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead that's dwelling in you and in me this morning hallelujah Amen? I don't know about you, but I got up this morning and I was so excited because I know that this day is a beautiful day of remembrance of the power of resurrection of Jesus Christ. So, right now, I'm going to ask uh, the Lord to bless the elements of communion. And those of you who are watching, if you at home have prepared the cup and the bread, this is the time to uh, ensure that everybody has uh, maybe a cup or the element of the bread, as I do. And here I have uh, prepared for myself a symbol of the bread and a symbol of the cup of what the Lord has done. I'm going to just pray with you by sharing uh, uh, these beautiful words, after which, if you are also prepared, you can join me. As soon as we have had the communion, um, I'll be asking uh, Michael to play a song uh, that is sang by one of our members who is in Japan, uh, Ayumi, who used to be one of our worship leaders. She, uh, during Easter, or I should say during Good Friday, sent me and Lillian a greeting of a song that she had sung. And uh, it really touched me, and I said that uh, with her permission. I said, Ayumi, it really brought tears to my eyes. Can I just let this, uh, well, at least a part of it, to be played in the congregation? And she said, she's more than happy. So after that song is when uh, Sandra will come and make some announcements. And don't leave because I'm going to uh, come back to give you the benediction. But let's first pray over the elements, which is the bread and the cup, asking God's blessing over it. Amen? Jesus, thank you for coming down to make a new covenant with us. Father, thank you for this plan has been hidden, hidden even from the principalities. Holy Spirit, thank you for the conviction you give us to draw closer to you and to our God and Father. And thank you, Jesus, for what you did. Lord, we thank you because on the night before you were betrayed, you took bread, you broke it, and you said, this is my body do it this in remembrance of me. And likewise, you took the cup, you blessed it, and you said, this blood is the new covenant, this covenant of love you cut for us on the cross. And Lord, each time we eat of this bread and we drink of this cup, we remember your death, your burial, your resurrection, and your soon coming. So I pray for people around the world, people in Denmark, everyone that is joining us right now for communion, that you'll bless the bread, You'll bless the cup, and you'll bless each individual in this awesome, awesome moment. I even sense your presence right now. Thank you, Jesus. 
I pray for your blessings, Lord, to touch and to heal. Heal the people that are watching right now of anything that is a, a pain and a burden, a sickness or a disease, be it on their body, their soul, their spirit, in any aspect of their life, I command it to loose its hold upon their lives in Jesus' name. And as we partake of the bread and as we partake of the cup, we remember your covenant of love, your unending love, your unfailing love. And Lord, we just receive it into our hearts and our lives in these most precious moments. In Jesus' mighty name, we ask and we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Now, those of you who are around the world and also those who are with me in the crew, let's partake together the bread. And likewise, let's partake together the cup. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. At this time, Michael will just be playing uh, this beautiful song by Ayumi. Let's just listen to it for a few moments in meditation, after which Sandra will come and uh, make some announcements. I hope you were touched. Every time I hear that song, it just brings tears to my eyes. I'm so, so blessed. Thank you, Ayumi, for sharing that all the way from Japan. And um, do remain uh, because we are going to have a little bit of an announcement. And we're going to worship the Lord in another format as we serve Him. And after which, I will come back to just pronounce a blessing over you, the benediction. So just stay, and uh, Sandra will make some announcements for us. And I'll be back in a little while's time. Thank you. Thank you, Ravi, for that wonderful message of hope, humanity, and redemption going through all the ages back to from Adam and Eve until now, especially at a time like this where people may need to have as much hope in the times of lockdown and COVID-19. This is truly a wonderful message, and we'll know we'll get through this time, and we know that there is hope. I would just like us to continue with our worship by giving to God his tithes and paying our offerings. Um, we have three different ways, uh, the credit card, mobile pay, and Danish uh, 
the bank transfers. Um, and whilst I'm paying my offering, I would just like to ask Ulf, he can just, he'll take us through on a short presentation of how to do it online. Credit card offering in ICC is easy. Go to the address bit.ly slash ICC offering in your browser and you will see this page. First, you choose the amount you want to pay. Secondly, you choose the designation. You can write your CPR number, ICC account number or full name. You can write a comment if you want that and then you click Next. Then you are asked for your first name, your last name and your email address. And then you click Next and you put in your card number and all the other details the same way as if you were just shopping on Amazon.com. Lastly, you press the green button to confirm the donation. After a few seconds, you will be taken to this page where it says thank you very much for your donation. This could not be easier. And always, if you have any questions, please contact us on info at getintouch.dk. Thank you, Ulf. As a church, we do have a missions program and we invite you to join us uh, and also to be faithful in um, giving of your missions. We're supporting a, a handful of missionaries, Joshua in Ghana, Ezra in East Malaysia, Carol and Darina in Czech Republic, Arasu, who is uh, in Holland, but supporting us through the missions in Uganda, and David Sadok in Jerusalem, Israel. As we are online, we do have the online forms online, so please go to our homepage, getintouch.dk, if you wish to participate in the missions and our New Year's pledge, or if you'd like to become a member, we have the membership forms also online. So please do visit our homepage. Just to continue with the announcements, uh, a few announcements. We still have our live midweek service, which we are live streaming. And the time is on, when it's on Wednesdays, and it's from 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock in Denmark. The lesson will be on, I can read, theological question and answer and on COVID. And you can send any questions to Ravi ahead of time uh, for this uh, midweek service. And of course, we will again meet online next Sunday. And this time we will have a special guest preacher. It's Victoria from uh, the board of ICC. So please do join us again and please do stay in touch. We have a weekly newsletter. So if you're not receiving this, please sign up. And of course, uh, we are streaming our services through the face ICC Facebook. Please like us. And we have the ICC YouTube channel. And of course, we have our homepage. So for any information, please visit our homepage at getintouch.dk. So before uh, Pastor Ravi comes to give us the benediction, I would just like to close in a word of prayer. It's been a blessing and also a privilege to stand here and be part of this online streaming. I know it's going out to all of you as you are worshipping God in the sanctuary of your own homes. And also it's um, uplifting to know that even though we're in this time of lockdown, Jesus is with you wherever you are. And as indeed the early church met in the homes, um, and as Ravi mentioned, there God is not on lockdown. So I'd just like to close in a word of prayer. Um, just like to bless each and every one of us and every one of you online. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to meet with you wherever you are, Heavenly Father. We pray that you bless each and every one of us in this unusual situation of lockdown. We thank you for the wonderful message of hope through the um, death, burial, and resurrection of, our, uh, of, Christ, of Jesus Christ, Heavenly Father. We pray that you'll touch each and every, was, every one of us in a special way. Those of, you, those of us who are at home and we um, cannot go out, so we have more time to spend with you, Heavenly Father, that you will reveal yourselves to us in a very special way. We pray especially for those who are still going out, 
the essential services, those who work in the supermarkets, those who are working in the hospitals, and those who are picking up the patients from their homes who have become seriously ill with the virus. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will bless each and every one of them as they are working hard to save lives and also to treat uh, the COVID-19 patients, Heavenly Father. We pray for everyone else who may not have the virus, but who may be ill and who also need to be uh, treated for other, um, other aspects, other medical conditions, Heavenly Father. We pray that you'll be with them too. And Heavenly Father, pray not least for those who feel isolated and lonely during this lockdown period, especially those who feel anxious or have anxiety. We pray that you'll be with them and comfort them and give them your joy, Heavenly Father. And at least that you'll reveal the very hopeful message of Jesus Christ to them, Heavenly Father, because this world needs it right now at a time like this, Heavenly Father. We say this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you once again, Sandra. And I want to thank all who have been a part of this production. We have a very small crew here, which is basically uh, Andy and Sandra, as well as uh, Lillian, Prince uh, Josiah, of course, Ulf, as well as uh, Michael. It's been tremendous. And I am so thankful that you joined us for this Easter service. Now, just before I close in prayer, yet once again, Another reminder, which is basically what Sandra has already mentioned to you. I know that I'm not a medical doctor, all right? But I'm a theologian, and that's my education, and a Christian counselor. Therefore, I want to invite you on Wednesday, any questions you may have about COVID. There's so much of information going around. Some people say that, hey, this has to do with 5G. And others are saying, no, 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 this has to do with the world order. And Bill Gates is going to control all of us by putting a microchip in us. And there's so many other theories that's floating around. And just to set you at ease, send your questions to me personally, or to either to info, at getintouch.dk or, or, of course, to rc at getintouch.dk by email. Send it uh, maybe on our Facebook uh, chat or whichever other means you are able to. Just send it to us, and on Wednesday, even while the teaching is going on, we'll answer your life. I want to take time to really give you some answers and to set you at rest that, uh, yes, this is dangerous, uh, and yes, it is uh, important for us to be careful and cautious, but not to end up in a place in our faith where we end up being paralyzed. Not at all. And so let me share this uh, encouragement with you. Now, we will close the Christmas service, or rather the Easter service. We will soon join also for Christmas. I pray it won't be locked down till Christmas. Let's pray it won't be that long. Let's pray it'll be over soon. Amen. But we want to close in the Easter service with a prayer. After this, I'm sure that many of you, wherever your time zone is, you might enjoy some food and, 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 and drinks and maybe some uh, lamb <laughs> with your family. But I want to just pray for the Lord to bless you and, and stay cheerful. Amen. This is a beautiful day. Uh, eat and drink and be happy because God, Jesus, He is resurrected. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you. The Lord lift up His countenance and give you peace. Shalom. Shalom and shalom. God bless you.